Welcome to Generative Art with Flutter. The last year has been quite hard for quite a few of us, and that's why it made sense to talk about something not as serious as the usual um, topics like architecture, state management, fancy UI, etc., but about a more um, but, but a more enjoyable topic as a whole. Um, I have been wanting to give a talk about generative art um, since I got a lot of questions after I posted a lot of uh, stuff on Twitter, but I never really had the time. And so when the team reached out to me, I, I was like, yeah, let's do it. So before we start, uh, here's a bit about me and what I do. Okay. So um, I'm a Google developer expert for Flutter and um, I work at Stream, uh, crafting um, chat and feeds SDKs for many platforms. And um, I, I, I started Flutter back in alpha. And back in alpha, there wasn't a lot of tooling, there wasn't a lot of uh, documentation. And back then I, I was like, you know, let, let's, let's make sure other people don't have the same problems I do. So I started writing a lot of Medium articles and stuff like that. And thankfully, it gained momentum. Um, it, it was um, helpful to people, and I'm glad to have been a part of it. So I gradually met the community, and it 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 is quite a large, um, it, it is quite a large help to be uh, of having the support of the community, no matter what we do. And yeah, and um, other than that, I, I have I've worked on Android before, but Flutter still remains my favorite. So um, now. Let's go to the main topic at hand, which is what is generative art? So for some reason, people seem to have this misconception that, um, okay, so generative art is just art drawn on a computer, but that doesn't really make sense if you think of it. For example, um, in, uh, like, it's not just a replacement of a canvas. For example, on an actual canvas, if you have a, a, a stroke of a brush from point A to point B, uh, in a computer, you would just replace that with a digital canvas and a line from A to B. But that's not what generative art is about. So there are multiple styles to this, but ge most generative art tries to kind of, uh, we can use more effects, we can invoke better mathem mathematical functions, and uh, we can legitimately have the art create itself. So we're not really creating art a lot of times, we're discovering it. So it becomes uh, it, it becomes a very fulfilling thing because you, you're kind of discovering something that's been hidden in nature, and you're just ample you're just amplifying it to something that humans would like. So um, it's it's quite a nice deal. So it's yes, it's not a replacement for a normal canvas. It it is um, so it is an autonomous kind of art, uh, autonomous generation of art in itself, and. You do not need to be. Uh, you do not need to have a very good artistic sense in order to become uh, a person who creates generative art. So, uh, and um, the other thing that's required there is a bit of math. But since, uh, like, when you actually do it, there's um, there's instant changes in math, and you you get a lot of kind of artwork immediately. So even the math side, I don't. I have not seen a lot of people hate, even though I particularly am not good at math. And regarding my artistic skills, I have one thing to show you. Um, last year, I got the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil thing, and um, my brother, who's an actual uh, who's an actual artist, uh, he kind of drew the first one which is like a re really brilliant picture. And the second one is mine, um, which is quite embarrassing. Um, but the point is, I am, e even though I do not have the color palette or the actual understanding of a lot of the stuff, I can do it because it's not really about creating stuff. It's about discovering it. So we're not really, you don't need to have an extensive idea, like ex extensive idea of something, of uh, art and everything to actually go ahead and um, create something like this. So uh, like for example, even uh, recently I, I was looking to hang something, uh, I was looking to hang a few portraits around the house and um, I like, e even then I just got out a, a few of the generative art things. So I, I just got them painted on an actual canvas and um, it was quite fun to make as well. So, so regardless of whatever happens, I still ha I still have artwork that I made in my house. So, um, 
we kind of need to start with how generative art itself began in Flutter. Um, so it was started by uh, Robert Felker. So Robert Felker, Ro Robert's a good friend of mine, and uh, he started with uh, a series called D-Art, I think. And so D-Art was uh, a series that um, like was showcased in quite a lot of places. Flutter officially made a, a video on it, on it as well. And what happened is um, it kind of exploded. And um, I, I remember um, like it being played in Flutter Europe. It, it, it was all over the thing. And I was genuinely impressed because uh, the thing is, I, I never believed I, I could make art to begin with. And I, I was like, you know, let, let's just give it a try. But one thing we kind of need to know before we go into this is that um, Robert's style and my style aren't really the same. They're, they're kind of different in, slight, in slightly, uh, they're kind of different in a few ways. So uh, his, his art would be uh, the first style, which I call creative. So uh, creative would be um, a style where you are genuinely envisioning. Uh, so for example, Robert has a good sense of uh, artwork. He's done qu quite uh, well at, uh, like even recently he made really beautiful portraits of cities and everything uh, with Flutter. So it, he has a good sense of, uh, uh, good sense of art in general. So he's made, uh, so he envisions them, he, draw, he draws them. And that's quite a good thing to, uh, that's uh, quite an amazing thing to do as well. But my style is slightly different, which I call inherent. And inherent, uh, inherent styles would have a second type of thing, which is that we're not really creating uh, any kind of artwork, we're discovering it. So if, if you kind of know uh, this, uh, if, if you know this pattern, uh, this is the Mandelbrot set. Uh, the Mandelbrot set was, you could actually call the Mandelbrot set the first kind of generative, generative art as a whole, because um, if you uh, don't know about this, it's ba it, it was basically a pattern that was found uh, in, in the, while just plotting uh, a function of, of, com of complex numbers. And um, it, you, you may have seen those uh, videos where it goes like infinitely down, like not infinitely, but like, it's, it's an infinitely repeating uh, pattern. So you, you could just go deeper and deeper and deeper and it, it wouldn't just never uh, be the same. You would just find more and more beauty of it. So this in itself was a, um, it, it was kind of the first kind of generative art, but what, uh, so this, uh, this piece itself was, one of my more recent um, sets called the Mandelbrot set, where I tweaked the Mandelbrot uh, set itself to give us more beautiful patterns. So these are not, so whatever you see in the screen, this is not something that I added a layer on top of. There's no layers, there's no nothing. This is a purely mathematical uh, generated thing. And because of that, um, it, it's it's been um, uh, like, because of that, it uh, you're discovering something, and that 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 kind of gives you a bit more joy when creating it as well, because uh, you find these things like what you might feel quite accidentally. So uh, before we actually start going deep into a lot of this stuff, we need to understand what is uh, how how do we draw this. Um, so. In every kind of framework, in every kind of platform, there's usually a canvas API. Uh, a canvas API allows you to like paint something. So essentially draw a line, draw a circle, draw, draw anything, draw, even draw an image itself onto the canvas, so the, the digital canvas. So Flutter allows uh, us to use custom paint. The custom paint uh, widget allows us to access the Flutter canvas and we use the custom painter to actually draw elements on the canvas. So for example, uh, if you can see the code on the right, the custom paint widget is what we would actually use. And we would pass along a custom painter to actually paint the things on the canvas. And um, yeah, so we can draw pretty much everything uh, we like on it. And the thing is, we are not gonna go super in detail uh, about this because um, we are, this is not gonna be a very long talk, and but there should absolutely be a more, um, there should absolutely be a more, engage, like a more detailed um, kind of brief on this as well. Um, so with, with, let's say what Robert created, there was a lot of, um, so you needed to know a lot of stuff uh, about the canvas in itself or m much more complex mathematical models. 
and um, what we're what we're going to be doing is going to be quite simple. We're not going to be working with um, like very complex things. We're just going to be using dots and like in in the example we're going to be using we're going to be, we're going to be using dots. So the Mandelbrot set I showed you is going to be the thing we're going to make today, and uh, because of that we're just going to use the uh, circle, draw circle, and nothing else. So um, if you actually look into the custom painter, see the custom painter has uh, two methods. Paint and should repaint. So paint is where we actually draw things. We can draw circles, we can draw lines, we can draw rects and whatever it is. So we um, we get the size that is there and essentially we just draw whatever we want from uh, let's say point A to point B. The should repaint is a method that gets called when the widget itself is rebuilt and um, these things, painting, can sometimes be quite expensive if it's a, if it's a very detailed drawing like ours would be. Um, so we do not have an easy way to, uh, so, so should repaint allow, gives us a way to decide should the widget itself rebuild. So uh, for example, if we decide, okay, some parameters have changed, let's rebuild, then it will be, then the paint itself will be called again. And if uh, we decide no, it should not be rebuilt, then it would, the, the paint function will not be called, so that uh, our um, like it, it would be quite a light call after that because the earlier state gets uh, saved. So we we use demo painter to actually paint the stuff, and uh, we're not gonna again we're not gonna go super detail into the code of this thing, but it it is quite a nice thing to explore quite in detail because even though we're gonna be using mathematics um, on uh, as our primary thing it does, uh, you can do quite a lot, like very pretty uh, code, um, very pretty art with um, just the functions that it offers. So uh, I just wanted to give a, one quick shout out to Flutter Shape Maker, which I, I just recently saw this. Um, it, it, uh, so Flutter Shape Maker is um, a tool by Parjen and he basically made a tool where you can just plot whatever you like and it just gives you an output which you can feed directly into the custom paint widget. And um, I hadn't tried it out and it, I, I, I really like the idea of it and I think it's made in Flutter Web as well. So it's uh, like, um, it's I, I don't know if it's super helpful at this talk, but I really wanted to give a shout out because it, it is quite an impressive tool. Okay, so now we can actually start out with uh, generative art in itself. And all, all the pictures you see on the right and left, they're kind of um, the, um, the, the, they're some of the out outputs of the uh, first set of generative art that I made. And that's not what, what we're gonna do today because that's slightly more tricky to explain, but I will provide links at the end for you to go and see the actual code itself. So uh, that, that's gonna be fine. So now let's start with actually building the generative art itself. So things to keep in mind while you're doing, uh, while, while you're actually trying to create stuff. So this will be an iterative process. It's not like you just enter something and it will, you, there's gonna be a lot of trial and error because if there was a defined procedure to this, it wouldn't be art. And uh, ultimately what we kind of want to do is uh, we want to establish kind of a procedure uh, as uh, rather an approach to how we deal with these things rather than defining a proper ABCD step plan uh, because that doesn't exist. Um, so what we so um, what we saw over here, this is what we're going to be building. So let's start with the uh, first step, which is start with a geometric structure of some kind. Because um, usually what we, what happens is when you already start with a geometric structure, it gives you some ways to nicely tweak the values of um, the of the the thing that already exists. So for example, uh, this is the Mandelbrot set. And in the Mandelbrot set, um, uh, so on the left is just code you can get off the internet. Like th there's no matter modifications to it at all. It's not, um, so that's basically code where um, it just draws a, like a black and white Mandelbrot set. And um, yeah, so uh, just sorry, before that, um, so just some things to keep in mind when you're making this kind of stuff. Use trigonometric functions. They're your absolute best friends. So um, sine, cos, tan, and atan. These four things are your absolute best friends because they can make, they can absolutely morph any shape into like a really beautiful thing. Um, not 
uh, not cotton cosec because they give some issues, but if that works in your case, great. And the second thing is use different shapes, sizes, and colors. Um, what happens is you don't really want something to have a, the same color everywhere. Even if it's the same color, try to make it like kind of uh, make maybe a gradient or um, different brightnesses and stuff like that. So uh, we want to use different shapes, sizes, and colors. Um, shapes, you might alter the um, radii of your circles. Um, sizes, now, now that depends on what you're really trying to do. So we're trying to first alter the, we're gonna to try to make something out of the Mandelbrot set. So first we're gonna start out with, with the Mandelbrot set itself, which is gonna be, and on the left is some code. And right now this is just purely internet copied code. There's no understanding to us whatsoever because we're not really trying to understand what it is drawing. Um, what we are trying to understand is where can we actually tweak it to make it look prettier. So what we're trying to do is trying to see where actually can we tweak this to make us give a good result. That would be uh, the next step. But before that, let's add some color to it. So um, I, I just took the same thing and instead of, uh, I, so I just added some color to it. And uh, if you, uh, so I, I am a person who loves logic very much and I, I want to understand how things or why things they are. So if you want to understand what is the black part and what is the green part, uh, in the Mandelbrot set, you kind of take one function and just repeat it again and again and again, seeing if it gives a finite value or an infinite value. Depending on if it's a finite value or an infinite value, you color it black or depending on the iterations, you give it a green or, green or whatever color you want. So here I'm just giving a normal, uh, whatever you we've decided. So now uh, we've added color to this and now let's see kind of how to tweak it. That's um, so now one, um, so this is like the thing which actually kind of checks whether it is in the range. Uh, and this is quite a nice candidate. And as you go along with generative art, the main thing you learn is where can you tweak something to actually get something out of it. So over here, um, you see these things, which is um, just uh, four X's and four Y's multiplied. And these are really, whenever, whenever there's multiplication, these are really nice candidates. And where there's addition, they are not. So uh, let's just try to change this um, uh, x raised to four into x raised to three and in just one, replace one x with a tan x. And what we suddenly get is, um, what, what we suddenly get is something like this. So, just with one thing, you can see the outside of it started changing and um, overall it starts to look different. Right now, not very pretty, I, I, I will agree, but at the very least different. So we've learned how to actually modify something and now we kind of want to do uh, how do we genuinely um, make it look good. So um, what do we do? So now we, we've already understood, okay, so we have these um, X's and Y's and at this point, you can basically go crazy with it. You, you can uh, take it to quite a large extent and you can add, um, you can substitute quite a few things in places of X's and Y's. And yeah, so you can start getting like pretty amazing things with, um, you can start like just these, uh, these modifications. So for example, uh, so this val over here is just some fine tuning. It's just a number. It's not anything different. Um, the, I just added this to just have like a fine tuning constant where we can just modify how much or how little it is affected. Um, so yeah, I just replaced uh, a few terms over here. And again, it gives a really beautiful picture. And if you realize all these designs in the background and everything, these are not something that those are, like, they, they're not, they're not just some design we slapped on. They are genuinely generated from the math within. And that's kind of a really amazing thing to realize because these are patterns in nature. We're not, we're not adding them on. And uh, that's quite a pretty thing. And um, even my first set, like all, all these, uh, my first set of generative art, for example, all of these kinds of um, images, uh, they they follow this they follow a similar principle because I started with a spiral, uh, I started with a spiral and kind of tweaked some values here and there, some colors, some shapes, some sizes, and you can see for example these dots are small and these dots the colors are different, 
all of them follow pretty much uh, trigonometric functions. And it's, um, it, it's a really nice thing to actually see. Um, the first time I actually saw uh, something like this come out was like all, honestly remarkable because I never actually thought, okay, this would actually come out of it. Because earlier I just had the spiral and suddenly just went to something which was like really beautiful, like something like this. And yeah, and that amazed me quite a bit. So uh, we now have this, um, we now have uh, this Mandelbrot set, which is, so we started out with a, with a normal Mandelbrot set. We added colors. We tried to find out where is the, what is the value that we can tweak? So for example, in the original code, um, we saw all of this is irrelevant to you because we're not really trying to affect the, um, these are just like the pixel values and everything. So this part was the only part that we could actually genuinely tweak. And whenever you see something like this, that's, that, that's basically uh, a nice way to start with because if there's multiplication, you can multiply it by sine, cos, tan, a tan, stuff like that. And that just changes everything without really affecting it. For, for example, you can still tell that it is a Mandelbrot set. And if you do it enough, you have quite amazing uh, structures that pop out of the math. And that's the thing, all of these designs that you see, or all of these pretty things that you really see, they are directly from the math. We have not done anything that was very intentional. You can just basically patch on a million terms, multiply whatever you like, and it's kind of see how, what comes out. But what you must understand is that uh, these are not just gonna come out of nowhere. So you have to start with some kind of base, which will be a geometric pattern. Uh, then you have to add on, then you have to realize where do I tweak these kinds of values uh, that will make it um, look better um, and kind of like behave uh, in kind of a nicer way. Uh, where can I add colors to this? Where can I, how can I affect the shapes and sizes of whatever I'm doing? And in the end, you get like really uh, pretty things all together. Um, so it's not very, it's when you start out, it, it might be, uh, somewhat disappointing, but, uh, like, uh, but like in fairness, these were my first, uh, generative art, uh, things, which were, the, the, you can't really officially call them generative art because they're kind of not, but these were kind of the things I kind of, um, randomized to do and they look good. But the thing is, um, it's not something that um, when when you kind of get the realization that whatever you whatever you just made came out of math itself, that is a different kind of realization uh, compared to like okay I, I drew like a bunch of squares or circles randomized on a computer screen, and then what I did was uh, I I took it and I kind of um, animated the entire thing, so. Um, I think Remy uh, pointed out that okay, you could actually do a bunch of animations, and um, yeah, and they don't seem to work right now. But uh, oh, it's yeah, I, I exported a PDF. My bad. But uh, you can find the animations on the uh, on my code pen, which was be this link, and uh, yeah. So like uh, overall, it was like uh, uh, like just a great thing to actually break away from the work uh, that we do and use the same code that we that we use on a regular basis to actually create something. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, you, you just start with something that you may have seen in your CS class and then you take it somewhere that, that would just not be in your wildest dreams. And you kind of start to see, because all these math tweaks that we made were pretty small and they weren't like really concerning. Uh, like they weren't like you would hate, uh, you would make it a very big math thing. And yeah, so uh, I think that's it for me. Um, you can find me on Twitter, GitHub, Medium, etc. And I mean, ultimately it just comes down to um, like, you know, just try trying something out for yourself, um, trying uh, just doing something and and it's fine if if you start so start out slow, but it's you you may also start out like really really well so um, If you do manage to actually make something send it over to me or just like post something tag me on Twitter and um, Yeah, I mean you on you can on the code pen you can find the original links for all uh, this kind of art 
uh, all of this kind of art and you can uh, you can tweak you, you can just tweak it right there uh, you can play around and um, and, and then after that, maybe you can just um, like just either create your own code pens and share share them, or just like you know make uh, canvas prints like I did um, for myself as well. So uh, thank you, and I, I think uh, we'll go on to the next talk now. And thank you for your time.